Columbus community advocates say the work is literally a calling fighting to ensure kids in this community have a bright future. It kind of in, in a similitude reminds me of a little bit of the 60s when we were more community centric and I saw every community member as my brother or my sister. For Pastor Mark Hampton with the Fresh Start Worship Center, being out on the streets in the community is a labor of love. Well, you can't change anything you don't talk about. Hampton on the forefront of citywide efforts to tackle crime and violence. To address issues in the community, he stresses people living in local neighborhoods will have to step up to the plate. If you don't expect more, you can't get more. AJ Pullen, one of those hearing that call to action. It takes a village. Everyone needs to step up. Pullen, head of the People Like Me project, focused on providing opportunities for local kids. A massive part of that effort, a fundraising event honoring a list of community advocates who have boots on the ground in neighborhoods citywide. Just really being that, that vessel in your community, I feel, is very important. Um, and we need it more than now than ever. Funding will be used to support his group's anti-violence, drug prevention, and educational outreach programs, supporting students like Javon Music, thankful for the support and mentorship he's getting. Like everybody goes through different problems and stuff, and it's like everybody deals with them in different ways. Hampton, confident efforts to directly connect with kids, a vital key to solving issues of crime and violence. And you're seeing these young folks really put their hands around things and say, we're going to do something positive, and it's happening. Hampton states it plainly. If the community is looking to address issues of crime and violence, people in city neighborhoods have to step up and be a part of the process to create change. He's glad to know a number of people now are starting to make those efforts. Rodney Dunnigan reporting. These images, shocking and quite frankly, heartbreaking. The fear in 61-year-old Lolita Hall's face is evident. These moments playing out shortly before her life was taken. Investigators say a series of scam calls led to her death and an 81-year-old man's arrest. We were given this video by Clark County deputies. The images playing out quickly, having a devastating impact on two lives. Investigators say it shows the moments 61-year-old Columbus Uber driver Lolita Hall showed up to 81-year-old William Brock's home to pick up a package. Investigators believe both were the victims of a phone scam. The story, a troubling one. We'll walk you through it. Clark County investigators say that 81-year-old William Brock got a scam call concerning a relative. The person on the other end eventually started to threaten him and began to demand money. Around that same time, deputies say Uber driver, 61-year-old Lolita Hall also received a scam call to pick up a package at Brock's home. When she arrived, investigators say Brock held her at gunpoint demanding to know who was calling him. We hear some of the interaction in the video captured from Hall's car. Help. 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 Deputies indicate Brock eventually shot Hall when she attempted to escape. As the pair moves off camera, you can hear her call for help. You can also hear the shots fired. Investigators indicate that during the entire back and forth, Brock never attempted to call police. Brock now charged with murder. Clark County deputies believe more charges could be coming. Uber released a statement to us saying this is a horrific tragedy and our hearts continue to be with Lolita's loved ones as they grieve. We have been in contact with law enforcement and remain committed to supporting their investigation. Also indicating the account of the individual who ordered the Uber trip has been banned. Clark County investigators are looking into those scam calls that started all of this. We're waiting for word on possible suspects and charges on that side of this story. Now two families trying to work through a horrific chain of events, all caught on camera. Rodney Dunnigan 
reporting. Creating the community's next generation of young leaders. Community advocates say for many, step one in that process is higher education. A massive effort currently moving forward, ensuring real opportunities for local kids to attend college. Police, crime tape, young lives lost to crime and violence. It's something people in communities citywide say they hear far too often. It's those stories pushing community leaders like John Pace into action. The community has to show them that we care. Pace, the CEO of Classic for Columbus, he's one of those trying to meet kids where they are, trying to make a difference. And it's important for the community to say, we have not forgotten you, we see you, we care about you. His group organizing a huge rally Thursday at Lyndon McKinley High School. <laughs> Star athletes speaking with students about the importance of education and making the right decisions in life. A message hitting home. Kids here thankful for the support. There's always been a stereotype on Linda, so just seeing uh, positivity come inside those doors is uh, great. It really highlights the the good things in our community rather than the bad things that everybody hears about. Thursday's event kicking off a weekend of fundraising activities. Founded in 2021, the Classic for Columbus raises vital scholarship dollars for students. To date, the organization says they've awarded more than $670,000 in scholarships, providing crucial funding to send kids to college. Parents, listen up. If you need scholarship dollars, the Classic has established a Columbus Academy program. Here, students are not only given career mentoring and educational outreach, but access to scholarship programs. Within each, the opportunity for kids to earn school funding. Pace making it his focus to impact young lives. It means so much to them. It's a life-changing experience for them. It's a fight he doesn't plan to lose. Volunteers are hopeful their efforts will make a difference, leading kids in the right direction and possibly saving lives in the process. Rodney Dunnigan reporting. The idea behind this effort is an important one, to bring new life into city neighborhoods and provide vital housing options to local families. It was very difficult because, you know, they had houses like two and three hundred thousand dollars and I'm just like oh my god this is this is not this is not going to work for more than a year now on your side investigators peeling back the layers of the housing crisis here in central Ohio a population boom mixed with property shortages and high housing costs equaling serious issues for countless local families as a renter, they show you no kind of mercy, and I'm just like, this is ludicrous. In an effort to ease the burden, the Central Ohio Community Land Trust was created several years back. They build on previously blighted properties. The trust leases the land, and the buyer purchases the home, meaning the home comes in under market value, some $150,000 less than other homes listed in the exact same neighborhood. We make them affordable by the subsidy we get from the city and the county to write down the cost of the house. Thursday, the next phase of the project moving forward. Woo. The mayor, along with city leaders, revealing the first land trust multifamily units. The two bed, one bath duplexes, affordable alternatives for families looking for something to call their own. When you look at the cost of home ownership, uh, the housing sometimes is just outside people's ability to buy. When we spoke with Susan Colbert in one of our latest investigations, she was settling into a one bedroom property she bought as a part of the program. For her, it was a fresh start. My mortgage payment is less than what I'm paying now, was paying in uh, rent. Yep. And I didn't, and you know, with my property, I have a garage. There, I didn't even have a parking space. If it wasn't for um, initiatives such as this, uh, you know, we would all be priced out and move further and further outside the city limits. The hope behind this project is to keep more families here in the city with viable options that don't leave them struggling financially. Rodney Dunnigan 
reporting. Smith came to Ohio State with all the hype in the world. He was a number one high school football player in his class and came to OSU continuing Brian Hartline's streak of getting the very best wide receivers in the entire country. Smith lost his black stripe in only four practices, the fastest ever for a freshman. For more on his expected impact, let's send things over to Ben and Justin.